Hello everyone, my name is Chantel, and for this video, I'll be demonstrating how to install an Aldic license. In order to use any of Aldic's products, a user needs to have a valid Aldic license file for the product to point to. These licenses come in two forms, node locked and floating. Before I start, keep in mind that these demonstrations are being performed on a Windows computer system. So now, I'll first be going over how to properly install a node lock license and what a node lock license is is that it's a license dedicated to one Mac slash host ID and cannot be used on any other system. As you can see, I currently have ActiveHDL 14.0 installed on my computer. But when I try to open it, I'm given this error that says that it cannot locate the license. So let's go ahead and fix that. First, I'll need to download a valid license.dat file. This type of file should be given to you through email when you purchase an Aldic product. For example, here's my email for my NodeLock license. And here's the license.dat file attached to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and download the license file. Once downloaded, I'm going to move that downloaded license file into my license folder. You can move this file into any folder you like. Just choose whatever is easiest since we'll be pointing to this file's location. And this step is optional, but I'm going to rename this file to aldic underscore license to easily identify it since this is my folder for all licenses that I would have. Now let's take a look at the license file to ensure that I've got the right one. As you can see within the first few lines of the file, there's a line that tells me the license type. I can confirm that this license type is node locked. Also make sure to check the configuration info to make sure that the license is configured properly to use the product specified. In my case, my license is only active for ActiveHDL 14.0, which is correct. Make sure that the expiration date for the license is not outdated as well. And once all of that has been confirmed, we can now move on to adding our Aldic license file to run ActiveHDL. On the Windows search bar, type in Edit the System Environment Variables and click on the first option. In this System Properties window, go to Environment Variables. Underneath System Variables, if you don't already have a variable named Aldic underscore license underscore file, then you'll need to make a new system variable. In my case, I don't have one, so let's make one. Click on New. Give the variable the name aldic underscore license underscore file in all caps. And for the variable value, click on browse file. This is where we'll need to point at the license.dat file that was just downloaded. Highlight the file and click open. Once that variable value has been added, click OK and then click OK again to save the changes. Now let's exit the System Properties window and let's try to reopen ActiveHDL once again. And voila, instead of that error screen, I finally got a valid boot up screen. And it looks like ActiveHDL was able to open up with no issues which means that the installation of the node lock license was successful. Now that I've covered installing a node lock license, it's now time to demonstrate how to install a floating license. A floating license can be used on multiple systems, but those systems must be connected to the same network as the host license server in order to use it. This part is for the IT's end and to show how to get the floating license server up and running. But at the end, I'll explain how to access a floating license as a user. You should receive a floating license through email. 
The process up until confirming the license info is similar to installing the NodeLog license. Download the license attached to the email. Now open up the license.dat file and confirm that the license type is floating and that it is active and with the right configuration. Now this is the point where floating and node lock license installation processes defer. To run a license server, we're going to need to download Aldec's daemon package. On the Aldec website, go to Downloads, Expand Licensing Software, 11.16.5, then General. Since this is a demonstration for a Windows system, I'm downloading the Aldec Windows 64-bit zip file. After downloading, create a directory where you wish to install the license server and label that new directory flexlm. I'll be creating my new directory in my C drive. And now, just move or copy the Aldic Windows floating license zip archive into the new directory. Now let's go ahead and unpack the archive into the same directory. Now after unpacking, let's now copy the downloaded license file into the unpacked archive. Now head inside and now we'll edit the license file. On the line that starts with server, change this host to the actual host name. In my case, this will be PC4. You can easily find the host name by going to your command prompt and typing ipconfig, ipconfig backslash all. Save and close the file, and now we're ready to start the license server. There are multiple ways to start a license server. You could start it manually through the command line or through the LM Tools utility, or you could start it automatically from LM Tools. I'll first demonstrate how to start it manually from the command line. First, open up your terminal or command prompt and change your current working directory to the license archive directory. And from here, all you have to do is execute the startlicense.bat file. Now to check if the license server is working, type in lmutil lmstat-c followed by license.dat. You could see that this was able to detect the lmgrd process of my license server and it shows that the aldic daemon is up and running. Also take a look at the debug log located inside of the archive folder. If there's any issues, this debug log is great for figuring out where the problem occurred as the log records every action revolved around the license server system. Then to stop the license server, just execute the stop license.bat file. Type Y for yes. And now we can use the lmutil command line to confirm that the license server has stopped. Now I'll show how to start the license server using LM Tools, which can be accessed through the command line or through the archives file directory. Launch lmtools.exe and then on the first screen shown, leave configuration using services marked and check LM tools ignores license file path environment variables. Use the first available service on the list and go to config services. Double check that the path to the lmgrd.exe file, the path to the license.dat file, and the path to the debug.log file are all correct. 
After confirming that information, go to the Start Stop Reread tab. Make sure to save your services and then click on Start Server. After a bit, it should say Server Start Successful at the bottom of the page. If you have an issue starting the server or if you just want to read the log, go back to Config Services and click on View Log. This will open the debug log and you can read every action that occurred up until the current action or issue. You can also check the status of the server using server status. But first, go to the utilities tab and add a new vendor path with Aldic as the vendor name and the path being the IP or TCP port of the license server manager, which by default is 27009 at the computer name or IP address of the license server manager. Click add vendor path and then head back over to the server status tab and click on perform status inquiry. And if you want to stop the server, make sure the use services and config services is checked and then head back over to the start stop reread tab and click on stop server. A message should appear saying stopping server. After stopping the server, you can head over to config services, close and reopen the log. And at the bottom of the log, you can see that the server had successfully shut down. And finally, I will show how to start the license server automatically. You'll be using LM tools again for this method. Head over to config services and make sure the paths to the LMGRD, license, and debug log files are correct. Make sure use services is checked. And then you're going to check start server at server power up. With this, the server should start up automatically whenever the system powers up. And just like the manual method, go ahead to start stop reread tab once again and click on stop server or just power off the host system. And now those are all the ways you could start the floating license server. Now, if you're just on the user end looking to use ActiveHDL with a remote license server, all you would need to do is go to edit the system environment variables, click on environment variables, and then create a system variable called aldic underscore license underscore file if you don't already have one, and then define the variable. This is a similar process to the node log license, but the value of the system variable will be the port number of the license server manager at the IP address or computer name of the license server manager. Click OK, click OK again to save, and click OK one more time. Now I'm going to try and launch ActiveHDL. And success! I was able to access the remote license. If launching ActiveHDL or any other Aldic product isn't successful, make sure to check on your end that you're connected to the same network as the host computer. And if that doesn't fix the problem, check with your IT person or team to have them restart the license server or troubleshoot any issues. And that's about it for this video. Once you have any of the two types of licenses installed and working, you can launch your Aldic products and be on your way to creating, verifying, and simulating your designs. Thanks for watching.